the last of the types of manipulation of data that um, we're going to talk about is one of the more complicated ones. And so before we go into talking about that, let's talk a little bit more about row indices. So in the examples that we've seen before, the rows have had zero, either zero labels, in which case all we had available is the numeric integer indexes, or we've had one label. But it turns out that you can actually assign more than one label to each of the rows. And so in this example here, I'm assigning both sector and state as labels for the row. And so to uniquely identify the row, I need to actually include both the sector and the state because there are multiple states that have the same sectors and multiple sectors that have the same state. So if I want to uniquely identify a row, I have to actually provide the, com the combination of the labels. So the way that I accomplish this, when I go to set the index, instead of passing in a single value, a single string value, I can, I can pass in to the uh, method a list of the uh, columns that I would like to turn into indices. But let's try that on our state CO2 data frame. So just to review, here's what the data, the head of the data frame looks like. So uh, if I set both sector and state as the indices, uh, the index labels, this is what I get. So as you can see, they're bolded and the, uh, the names of the labels are now offset downward from the generic column labels. So having assigned the first two columns as a label actually allows me to do another uh, sort of summarizing operation here. Since uh, in my original table, some of the values in this row were not numbers, it wouldn't make sense to be able to take the sum function of all of the um, items in the row because you can't add a string together with a number. But once I have turned the two string columns into labels, now the actual data within that row is entirely composed of numbers all the way from the beginning to the end. So that allows me to go ahead and perform the sum function. In the earlier examples, we only performed sums on the uh, columns. So we went through and summed up all the rows in a particular column. But in this case, we can, uh, by specifying that the axis we want to use is columns instead of the default, which is to sum up going down the rows, we can actually generate the sum for each of the rows, of the values of each of the rows. And let's go ahead and run that and see how that turns out. So we can see that uh, I now have a single dimension to my number items here and the labels, the two uh, types of labels that I have are carried over into the series that was generated um, to contain all of the sums for each combination of sector and state. Doing this now allows me to change the form of the entire table. So um, the, the sort of setup that we have here, sometimes people refer to these as grouping variables because the, um, the two labels are different ways that we can group the rows. We can group them by state or we can group them by sector. So having the, um, the setup where we have grouping uh, variables and then data is sometimes called uh, a, the long form. And we can change this long form into a wider form where instead of having one of the grouping variables, we can instead turn those into column headers and then take all of the data that applies to each one of those uh, grouping values and turn put them into separate columns within the table. So um, this process of taking what we would call stacked data like this and turning it into the sort of normal tabular form that we're used to is called unstacking. It turns a long table into a wide table. 
And you can also go in the reverse direction, which is called stacking. So if we uh, go back to our data, we see that we are in a position where we could stack this data. We could stack it either um, so that the columns would be sector or that the columns uh, could be, would be states. I should say we can unstack them. So what I've chosen is to unstack them by sector. If I uh, go ahead and run that, I can see that now I have only a single label over here and the labels that were one of the grouping variables for the rows is now the label for the columns, the new columns that I've generated here. Um, so I could have um, put in state, and now if I run it, it's re it has unstacked them, but it's now unstacked them in a different way. This is probably not the most convenient way because this table is way too wide. It was probably better, since I only had five categories in the sector, to have used them as the column headers, but either way, uh, it's pretty much your choice.